Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Uh, this will be just a little bit different. Uh, we call this the Yusuf Dilemma. Uh, this is a almost time specific. <laughs> I'll get into it. The name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, by the English meaning. Old Joseph, he said, O man of uh, truth, Expound to us the dream of the seven fat kind whose seven lean ones devour and seven green ears of corn and seven others with it that I may return uh, to the people and that they may understand. Joseph said, for seven years shall you diligently sow and as you want. And in harvest that you reap, you shall leave them in the ear, except a little of which you shall eat. Then will, I, then will come after that a period of seven dreadful years, which will devour what ye shall have laid by in advance for them, all except the little which ye shall have specially guarded. Then will come after that period a year in which the people will have abundant water and in which they will press wine and oil. So the king said, bring ye him unto me. But when the messenger came to him, Joseph said, go thou back to thy Lord and ask him, what is the state of mind of the ladies who cut their hands? For my Lord is certainly well aware of their snare. The king said to the ladies, what was your affair when ye did seek to seduce Joseph from his true self? The ladies said, Allah preserve us, no evil, uh, no we against him, said the Aziz's wife. Now is the truth manifest to all. It was I who sought, sought to seduce him from his true self. He is indeed of those who are true and virtuous. This say I in order that he may know that I have never been false to him in his absence and that Allah will never guide the snare of the false ones. Nor do I absolve my own self of blame. The human soul is certainly prone to evil unless my Lord do bestow his mercy. But surely my Lord is all forgiving, most merciful. So the king said, Bring him unto me. I will take him specially to serve about my person. Therefore, when he had spoken uh, to him, he said, Be assured this day, thou art before our own presence, with rank firmly established, and fidelity fully proved. Joseph said, Set me over the storehouses of the land. I will indeed guard them. And one who knows their importance. Thus did we establish a power to Yusuf in the land to take possession therein as when and where he pleased. We bestow our mercy on whom we please and we suffer not 
to the loss of the reward of those who do good. But of course, certainly the reward hereafter is better. Uh, I want to read one more here. It's related to Yusuf alayhi salam. Uh, thereupon Joseph said, No, O my sustainer, thou hast indeed bestowed on me something of power and hast imparted unto me some knowledge of the inner meaning of the happening of things, originator of the heavens and the earth. Thou art near unto me in this world and in the life to come. Let me die as one who has surrendered himself unto thee and make me one of the righteous. Uh, I read this uh, because uh, this has a lot to do with us right now. Not only have we been talking about it, not only we have flyers about it, we've had programs in California, La Tatrapa, you know, that no reproach this day. No matter what people seem to have done to us, we said no reproach. We even took uh, Khadija and Mukhtar aside when this stuff first started happening. We took them aside in the front of the masjid and we said uh, I'm going to help y'all because y'all don't understand what's going on. You know, you know, you're doing stuff, you're doing what you're told, but this is bigger than you. Uh, you guys don't get it. So I told them, and even when we was in court, I said uh, the old judge was on their side, the old lady judge, but it didn't make no difference. It didn't make no difference because this was all being acted out. So I said to the judge, I said, no, I told them what I just told y'all, that I'm going to look out for them and I'm going to help them. So I told them that. You know what? They didn't say, there's a lie. He didn't say that. They didn't say nothing. And I had one witness in court with me. He said, man, they didn't move. I didn't move. My witness said, I froze because I thought they was going to jump up and start lying and saying he didn't say that. They didn't say a word. They caught him off guard, basically. Uh, so just to relate the story a little bit. Old Joseph, he said, O man of truth, expound to us the dream of seven fat kind who seven lean ones devour and seven green ears of corn and seven others uh, with it that you may return to the people and that they may understand. Of course, remember before this, the king, and remember, in the Quran, they referred to him as the king, not Pharaoh. It's a long historical story, but they're referring to him as the king. And even when uh, Joseph puts the trick on his other brothers and put the, the, the beaker in his, his first brother's uh, uh, baggage uh, by the law and they call it uh, Deen al-Malik the way of the king by the king's law he couldn't have done that but he, he was given this opportunity anyway this is a long historical story because uh, the way it's put in commentary that this was not a pharaoh that was on the throne. This was a people more like Joseph, right up around Israel and all that. You know, they had all them they had Amalekites and all them people. Okay. They was running Egypt at that time. 
And then when Joseph brought him and his brothers there, I know I'm straying, but I might as well have got started. This is what the commentary said. That when Joseph and his brothers, when he brought his people into, into Egypt, okay, they were kind of like uh, regular Yahudis after a while. They took over the cattle industry. And the people forgot about, you know, I got to remember, you see them cows, long horns in Egypt, they was big. Almost big as snakes and other stuff. They was big in Egypt. So that was a rebellion in Egypt. And the Egyptians took over their own country and later on they put Pharaoh back on the throne. So when Moses is there, Pharaoh is on the throne. For many thousands of years before it was Pharaoh, but at that time they referred to him as the king. He's never referred to as Pharaoh. So then the people enslaved uh, Joseph's people. You know, they, they took over everything and, you know, stuff like that. So the people got mad and they had a rebellion and they put them in slavery. That's what it said. It kind of fits a lot. But now we're at the time when they, they didn't ask these questions. All the grandees is there and they say the king have his dream. And they said, no, man, we can't uh, confuse medley. You know, that's what they said. They said, man, we can't, uh, we, we can't start lying like we get it and all that. We don't get nothing. Then remember the cupbearer that he was in the pen with told him, I, I know somebody could, might say, hey. So he went and told Joseph. So Joseph interprets it. He said, yeah, you're going to have seven great years. You know, seven good, heavy flowing water. You know what I mean? So during those seven years, save, eat a little bit of that corn and stuff, but save most of it in the year. Because after that, you're going to have seven bad years. The seven cows going in the Nile and coming out looking skinny and all that. It's the same thing. So remember now. So the king said, man, bring that, bring him on out. He said, oh, no. He told the guy, go back and ask the king to ask the women about those plots and schemes, right? Now, you know, me and you, if they came and unlocked the pen, the guard come, Reams, Johnny Jones, come on out of there. Yes, sir, I'm, I'm ready to go. I was arguing the day before, but uh, headed home? Yes, indeed, I'm ready to go. Uh, by the way, don't worry, we'll fix all that other stuff later, right? That's the way we would do. But Yusuf alayhi salam has a serious mission here. And remember, he is commissioned as a prophet. He's a prophet. And, and remember, even before that, they, he's given some inclination about all of this that's supposed to happen. He's already given that in the first ayats, you know that they use the word hadith, that he's given some understanding of hadith, sayings, you know. Now, and this uh, one that uh, we just read, uh, it says, O my sustainer, thou hast indeed bestowed upon me something of power and has imparted unto me some knowledge of the inner workings of happenings, originator of the heavens and the earth. Thou art near unto me in this world and the life to come. 
Let me die as one who has surrendered himself unto thee and make me one of the righteous. So this is coming near the end of the surah. So this is just a, a, a dua of gratitude to Allah from Yusuf, thanking Allah for giving him the special gifts he got is, is, uh, is very serious because he is given knowledge of the inner workings of things. You know, how they really work. And he's shown it all the time. That's why when the woman come at him, he turned to leave. He said, no, oh, lady. And then the Quran says that he would have leaned toward her because he's young, good looking and everything. So, but he said, no, I'm gone. And then, now the Bible don't say this, but the Quran does. Uh, the Bible leaves it though, that there's no proof. But in the Quran, the servant said this as a sign, you know what I mean. Uh, was his shirt, shirt torn from the front? If he was torn from the front, then he was trying to grab her and take, take care of business. But if it's turn, torn from the back, remember? The Bible don't clarify that, but the Quran does. So when the Aziz looked, he said, well, they didn't trap the brother and I we send you on off to the penitentiary because it's a thick plot. It's a thick plot, but that was part of his mission to go to the penitentiary. That's why you didn't hear him in there, oh, doing all this time, you know. Even when he, when the cupbearer got out, he forgot what Joseph had told him at that time. And then he was talking to the other guy. The other guy got stuck up on the thing and it got the, but the cupbearer didn't remember until these other events happened. He said, Man, that's right, Joseph in a joint. That's why the Quran says he was there a number of years. It don't say like seven more years of, but it was a number of years. It was many more years that he stayed in there. Even after he didn't told, you know, so that was his job. Now, da -da -da -da. then will come a period after the seven dreadful years. Okay. So I'll start uh, with the uh, so the king said, bring ye him unto me. But when the messenger came, Joseph said, go back to your Lord and ask him what was the state. What happened to, about all these ladies? He wants clarification. I'm coming out, I'm getting ready to do a job. I want everybody to know that I'm clean. So they went through, the king just asked him, what happened with them? He said, hey, man, we ain't, man, that brother ain't did nothing. Right? He's clean as a whistle. At that point, that's when uh, Joseph comes out. Okay. There's a lot in here about Nafsamara, Nafsalawama. We'll get to the meat of the story in just a minute. Uh, Joseph said, set me over the storehouses of the land. I will indeed guard them as one who knows their importance. So then it went on and on and on. Uh, they established Yusuf in the land. Uh, we have a similar situation here in, in America. Well, I'm glad y'all are here because in year, for year after year after year, you have listened to me give lecture after lecture and prediction after prediction. 
Some of the general predict predictions, but there are several, at least nine or ten, that was just concrete. That they're like, look, this is going to happen. They ain't going to do that. They ain't going to do that. This is what's going to happen. They were earth shaking. They were. They set the world that is happening now. You know those predictions when they invaded Lebanon. We said that everybody was bawling big tears. Look what they're doing. I said, that's good news. Nobody even, they wasn't, they was, that man and went crazy out there in the Southeast. I said, that's good news. I gave three lectures uh, 2006 in July, both, all of them, by Shiro. Like Moses was a Mubasha bringing good news. So Basharun means good news. I said, that, that's what I titled the lecture, they're good news. All the things related to uh, what's happening in the world today, uh, we said, no, they're going to go through certain stages. Those are concrete stages. We have to admit it. They're like specific steps. No, this will be a protracted struggle. They're going to go through this stage, and it'll look good on the surface at first. That ain't what it's going to turn out to be. They're going to subvert it. They're going to sabotage it, and it ain't going to be worth a dime. And that's exactly what happened. Not only did Equan come over here and get clearance, from Obama during those years, but we said <clears throat> there will be no Arab Spring. Remember the news, Arab Spring, Arab Spring, oh no. Ain't gonna be no Arab Spring. You can forget about it. And we didn't say it like uh, it was an analysis. We said it with authority. If you can, you can check the tape. We said, oh no, it will be no Arab Spring. Forget about it. Again, everybody, well, everybody jumping up and down. They had tattletales go to Egypt and call me. I remember because I happened to be at Magic Johnson Theater. Just I wasn't looking at nothing, but I was walking around in there. And they called me, and and then I was doing a survey on movies at that time. You know. Or whether they, uh, not that I'm a critic or nothing, but part of my portfolio is uh, observing movies. For We call it science and up. During the old days, we used to science up. You know, you study what the, the white man is up to. It's called science and up. That's back in the early 60s. Anyway, so that's what I was doing. I was science and up to stuff, you know. And they called me. It was Muhammad al Asi and Masood Chajari, Islamic, whatever they call the human rights over in London, and uh, praying out in the street. They said, No, it's an air. We're in Tahir Square now. I said, I don't care where you are. It ain't going, it ain't no air swing. You can ask them. I said, hey, no, it's a revolution. I said, <laughs> shoot. It ain't no revolution going on in Egypt. That ain't happening. That's what I told them. You can check with them. That they called me on the phone and try to con me into thinking. For what reason? I don't know. I don't care. But I told them it ain't it ain't happening. Could somebody turn the heat off just for a minute? Anyway, this is what we told them. And long story short, that in the long run, it'll, that'll pass by and it'll be a uh, certain unity, unity of opposition. And it means it'll be, instead of it being a, a national approach, it's going to be a regional approach. And right now, everything is regional. It's Yemen, right? It's strategic, strategic alliance. Right? It's a strategic alliance. The white man ain't got nobody on their board that's come up with nothing like that at that time. Right? So Syria, 
Iran, Iraq, and Soviet Union. But those three Arab countries and the fourth, Yemen, that's a strategic alliance. And it's a regional approach. No one, everybody's talking regional, region now. Like as soon as we say something, you may think I'm joking. You can go to the newspaper the next day and they all saying that. Yeah, they ain't, none of them said it before. You ever seen anything like that? On the TV and anything? Ain't nobody talking about uh, Najaf and Karbala and what it mean. We, we, we was telling them what it mean. This is some knowledge of the inner workings of things. That is, it's true. Okay, now right now, we can't, this is a serious time, so we can't pretend because of modesty that that hasn't been happening. You know, and then Allah set the opportunity there, then you have to step out and uh, get busy. You know, it's right now. When Yusuf alayhi salam says, set me over the storehouses. Because I know their value. Okay. America got a lot of stuff going on and they, they, they are bumbling, bumbling idiots. And they've been bumbling idiots. They haven't hit no ball out of the park since World War II. It's just pitiful. It's not only Vietnam. They got knocked out in Korea, but nobody remembers it was Korea, 1951. You know what I mean? They still got a war going on. They, in 53, they just signed in Penmanjan, they signed a ceasefire. Technically, North Korea and the U.S. is still at war. Technically, they are still at war today. They are at war right now. Okay. All of that's okay. Here's where we are. We've been dealing with boss man for a long time. He's been playing with us and technically we've been playing with him. Technically we've been testing the system for a long time. Long, long time. For a, a, a test to be reliable, it has to be repeatable. Okay, now if you wonder why, uh, we'll just go backwards. We'll go, you go outside right now, you'll see a, a dump truck, whatever that thing is, a tow truck. You see cars parked all out there, and you'll see it uh, looks bad. If you went into the house, well, we was in the house, fixing it up, painting it. It already starts to look better. Uh, we get a little carpet in there and paint up a little more. Okay, now, to other people, they would say, well, how many times has that happened? We would say many times. Many. Well, it has. It's happened over on A Street. It happened everywhere we have property. The same thing. Then why we run the test the same thing? Because for it to be reliable, it has to be repeatable. Why don't you go get some for your cars? Why don't you go get another mechanic? Why don't you get... It has to be the same mechanic. But he tears up your cars when he wants, and he lets them run when he wants. That's right. If we got another mechanic, the test, right, would have a different variable. One variable is different. So the test wouldn't be reliable and provable unless you did that same test with different variables over and over and over again, which we do. Why, the, 
How many times has that happened in that apart in the house next door? Many times. That's why you can plan ahead based on the reliability of the test. When Abdul Jalil was there, he left the house in the middle of the night and uh, shotgun blast all over the house, the thing. That he, so we remodeled it. We remodeled it then, then we remodeled it later, but how did we remodel it? We've taken all the carpet out now, but we didn't take it out last. We washed the carpet. Why? Because we had one more test. Why did we know? Somebody in my house said the lady that's married to so-and-so, they thinking about renting the house. That's good. Well, we're not, we're gonna, it's nice, it's fixed up nice, it's painted everything, but we're not gonna put no new carpet in there. Not then. Why? Because the reliability of the past test, it always happens that they're going to leave. And when they leave, they're going to leave it effed up, which they did. That's the test. It's not only that. What about A Street? Remember, it's, they leave it. It's not the first time. All the people do all the same things under the, all, whatever the conditions are. They always leave. They always mess it up. It was so messed up, you, you got sick and you're about probably the healthiest one out of all of us. The, the, the thing just, you know, it was filthy in there, right? It was unbelievably, of course, now technically, you said you might have seen some like that when you was a firefighter, but I can imagine, I'm a common citizen. I had never seen nothing like it. Big pots of urine, pots. Why would you be pot? Even in the old days, you know, excuse the expression, a pot to piss in, or wonder to throw it out. At least if you urinate in the pot, throw it out and throw it outside in the morning. Yeah, just go outside and throw it out in the grass. Anything. But don't just leave it there. Can you imagine the smell accumulating? And you urinate on clothes, and the clothes picks up the urine smell. We had to take everything out of there. And then we had to saturate the floor and everything with bleach. Yeah, that's why it cleaned on up. Bleach, take care of anything. But it, it, we soaked bleach into the wood almost. So, but the test is the same one. Why? Because it's reliable. They're going to leave and they're going to owe money. Oh, right now, I don't know whether it's four, six thousand, something. Whatever they left, we technically couldn't afford it. But they left it so bad that the place, they come right by, now they didn't told them to do it, and they condemned it. They condemned it. You know, they boarded it up and charged us for the boarding. Although we cleaning it up. And the people, is, okay, that's no problem. We're not, we're not crying about that. Why? Because it's all predictable. That's what a test, they've been testing us. The same test that Yusuf went through, we went through it. We haven't bit at nothing, the, the white man, sit around here, and they read your file and they said, this nigga likes yellow girls. They didn't had all kind of yellow wavy hatted women. Even people have their family, almost still teenagers coming by cause they yellow and they pretty. And when you come in, you smile, that's a pretty girl there. That's a pretty girl, but I don't want to have nothing to do with her. Just pretty, right? Niggas is not like that in America. If they see somebody they like, <laughs> they got a scheme right away. 
I'm sorry. I'm not like that. Why? Because messing with somebody uh, make you almost a pedophile they so young. Can you imagine Negroes here having they, people using their daughters as bait for the white man? Yes, they do. For this very, I mean, they really be using them. You wouldn't believe the stuff they, they use. When they get at a certain age, they have them, you know, I go out and work out all the time. They'll have one of them leave a little mini pad with a little blood on it to show that, okay, I menstruate now. Ain't nobody going to see it but me. Just to make sure that I know that it's all right to do whatever, you know. We didn't pass every test. Boss man then struck out for 40 something years with us. Can you imagine? You can't imagine the fitness, the foolishness that boss man and tried with me. But he ought to be able to read the newspaper, the Muslim news. It ain't no Negro. In the United States, imam or nobody else has got 15 years of celibacy. At the height of the day, you know, when you juiced up in your 40s and running late 30s and 40s into your 50s, er, you know, those are some of the juiced up years of your life, especially you running marathons running, and you lifting iron and you working. Your work is more important. When we was in Oakland, we used to have family night. The people would pretend that the imams, they are lonely. So we're just going to stay late and late. I used to flip the lights. Click, click. Y'all got to go, man. So I could go to sleep. I'm not lonely. Y'all is crazy. And the way y'all married life, I don't want none of that. Or whatever, if y'all calling that happy life, I say it's happy I go in and guess what? By the time my head hits the pillow, I'm asleep. Not y'all, y'all up arguing about money, or the kids tripped in the water, anything stupid, right? I, I ain't got none of that. Focusing on movement. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't think uh, from our research, I don't think the people they got out front, whether it's Mella yelling them, whether it's the ma'am in Brooklyn, whether it's the mush mouth ma'am in New York, whether it's all, I don't think they're worth a dime. I'm sorry, I just, uh, they, I'm sure they're Muslim. But the way they operate, something is wrong with them. Something is wrong with them. We have flyers right here from 86, 85, 84, 85, 6, about drug program, right? In 88, 89, they have the, the drug busters in New York. They ain't busting no drugs. And I tell them, you ain't going to stop no drugs. And they don't stop no drugs. But they figure if you, if, if that's the flyer you're having, they want to undercut it. The whole thing here in America has been aimed at one guy. I'm sorry. Maybe you see it different. I don't see it different. It's been aimed at me. The whole thing. And everybody is in on it. All the misogyny. How is that possible? That all the misogyny, all the Negroes, and they're all giving big talks and they're not standing up for, they're not, they helping those people who are afraid of the white man. They're afraid of the Americans. All the immigrants are afraid of the Americans. They won't even eat, no matter what happened, you can't get a peep out of none of them people. But we're yet Muslims and the, the the Quran and the Hadith give you certain guidelines, right? Maybe they follow them, maybe they don't. But in the case of Imam Jamil, if your brother da 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 da, 
And it's not just Imam Jamil, their own crew. When they get in hot water, they leave them to, they leave them. They just run off and leave them. And we tell them, that's going to get you more trouble. They thought we was exaggerating. I said, when a person get arrested, go to jail. I said, go buy their family a Benz and a new house. And they arrest somebody else, do the same for them. But if you have their wives driving up to them or sitting like a Darl Hidra sitting in there with cookies on the thing, trying to raise funds for their husband, right? And the car is smoking going down the street. Any imam or leader open his mouth, they wife going to tell him, hey, you see what's happening to her? You want that to happen to us? And we told them here, we told them here 15, 20 years ago, 10, we told them, you want to solve boss man? You want to get him out of your house? Everybody get arrested. Go buy him a house. Five bedrooms. You can afford it. And a new Benz. Don't have to be brand new, but it don't break down. It runs good. With a sunroof, so the kids will be reaching up out of the top. You know, otherwise, we'll say, look at them. Why don't you speak up? Yeah, they be trying to, they said, if we get rid of you, we're going to be living like that. Right? So we get you off into the jail, penitentiary. And you, we don't live like that now, but if you go to the pen, it's not that people think like that, but it's possible. We told them, you want to keep the police from arresting y'all? Do that. They didn't believe it. You know why? They don't think we have no sense. That's the rule. We learned that from a long time ago. Run off and leave the people, and the government will come up on you over and over again. Use them as a rallying point. That's what happened with Imam Jamil. The brother said, we, uh, of course I know that he didn't say this, but they said, he said, that if such and such thing happened, he's gonna do such and such and such and such. And they said, uh, that we told him that uh, basically, of course, they have Bayer. That means if they mess with their leader, <laughs> what? <laughs> that is insanity. That you have Bayer to the leader and the government can do anything they want to the leader. And you tell the leader, if you do anything about it, we ain't going to get out and raise funds. And you notice they didn't. They didn't. We did. We had to force them down here at three, two, three fundraisers. We had to force them here. They came. We had the programs. They wouldn't do it. They said this is going to cause trouble for the community. No, 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 no. If they do that to you, you use that as a benefit to rally all the people. Yeah, you use it to rally a point. Every time they look at you, you're not decreasing in numbers, you're increasing in numbers. They didn't look at it like that. Then the government kept cracking down on us pretty soon. Uh, we almost starving to death ourselves. But we did squeeze a good 300,000 out in the first years. Yeah, sure we did. Okay. So they don't think nothing about us. And the Negroes help the foreigners with all their projects. And guess what? The Negroes don't know nothing about us. It's just what they act like. Can you imagine? They don't know nothing about us. <laughs> That's what they say. They don't ever come by. They don't ever call. Can you imagine? You don't never get a call from none of them. And you go down to, what's the name, the care or anybody else. And then the man you've been calling, the Meeks man down there with the Muslim, whatever it is in Dallas, I might stop by there and, oh, oh, 
when I go back to California. But I ain't going back to California in a hurry. I'll tell you why. California then fixed up these cases so I could win them just like that. All of them. It's just obvious. I could win any of them. I could win all of them. I could, they, they done laid it out. They done arrested me in the masjid and I have the deed that has my name on it. You don't have nothing. Can you imagine? You don't have nothing. The last time I was in court, I said, can they produce something that says that anything? The case that I won, the, the lawyer said, the, they have a, a self-generated a computer generated thing that they signed. They signed it. Mukhtar and Khadija signed it. And they, what? They're going to put me out of the center? How? Man, how? Board of directors? How are you the board of directors? What? You, you went to court and got a stamp saying you're the board of directors? Or you went to Sacramento and you can just sign this thing they did there and they give you a slip with a stamp on it. Say, you, you, it's a point of information. It looks legal to everybody else. If you use that in the court, they said he used that and he tried to go to, to the, and change the name on the, on the, you know, the way they have the people in the, from the, the down from downtown, or whatever it is, the people of, in the county office. And they asked them, you know, we're in the court, they asked them the legal questions. Well, why couldn't they change that? They said, well, because you can't change the name on a deed unless you change the, you know, the ownership. But his name is right here. It said, that's for service, it's not for us. That's for service. It's like if you want to pick up things like that. Okay. When I go to court, I'm going to beat them. I'm going to sue them for maybe $100 million. That's what I'm going to sue them for. I'm going to sue them for that. And I'm not going to try to convince the jury of nothing. I'm going to tell the jury, I'm here to recruit you, not to... Uh, it ain't going to be nothing like... Uh, Oh, I mean, this, uh, this, that, and other. I'm just going to talk about what we're talking about now, about the world. We ain't got but so much time. We got to get this thing fixed up. We want you to join in and help. You know what I mean? Anyway, here's our position. Just like Joseph said to boss man of his day, I ain't coming out to you clarify all of this. That's what we're saying to the, to the white man right now today. I ain't going back to California till I get ready. And also, you the one need help, not us. You haven't had a winning day in so long. It's unbelievable. And you got a Pure jackass. Can you imagine Donald Trump? Look at the man. And they scared of him. The white folks are scared of him. That man is a big old stupid punk. What I tell him is, you go and hook me up and you let me take care of this bum for you. I'll take care of him. I just clown him, make a fool out of him. Can you imagine their president? It was caught on tape, visible tape, and you see it. Yes, I feel on their pussy, and they like it, and they don't say anything because you're famous. And then the dumb white women, they talk about how smart white women are, and they vote for this clown. Can you imagine how stupid they are? That may, that's how far gone they are. But they're gone farther than that, because see, that was before he was elected. Now he's been elected and he's showing you really how stupid he is. And they're afraid of him. The Congress is afraid of him. The Republicans are, 
you can give me two, three minutes now. You got to remember, Sean Hannity is his advisor, right? I was on Sean Hannity's show. What is it Sean Hannity saying about, oh yeah, he remembers, he got to remember me because he called the next day when I was down in Texas and said, we want you to, 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 to say this, that, and other. On the radio, not on TV. So Sean Hannity got me on the radio and I was, and I was in the Islamic Center in Houston in, this, in the library, it's glass and closed so the people can see but they can't hear too too well. They can hear, but I'm closing off the, any noise from the outside. They can see me talking, and they can hear it, but I can't hear anything from the outside. And he's talking, Imam Musa, you are such and such and such. And I say, man, you's a sissy. You got you wearing girl clothes, man. You who you talk think you talking to? Da, 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 da. That's what I'm saying. But guess what? He's got the mute button on. The mute button, because we listen to the program right after that, and the brothers are technocrats. You know they do really. They do that. They do the WPFW type program down there in Houston, Pacifica. So we all getting ready to listen to it. It's getting ready to come out. And he got the mute button on. I said, that's all right. Ain't nobody paying no attention. He got whipped the day before. And he never forgot it. He was trying to get back. You know what I mean? Somebody called him because they looked at it and they said, hey, man, that nigga slipped up on you. He did. That's what they told him. Hey, man, he just sit there and was da -da 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 -da. all of a sudden he just was beating you all the time and you didn't know it. Well, that's what we had to do. We knew what they did to Samuel Arian and them people. They got him cases. So I know what he going to do. You know. So we had, our, we had our stuff in our mind, what we wanted to do. You ain't seen us on no Hannity since. Them other imams that get up there scared. See, they, every program they had with me, they lost bad. Uh, you see Berkeley, the Zionist up there, and uh, UCLA, you know, with the Zionists. They always lost. In UCLA, they was crying, physically crying. And the Muslims saying, the, the, the people was actually crying. I said, great. That's what they need to do. The Palestinians are getting blown up and shot and hung out to dry. Who do you think care about that? That's what we're supposed to do. Break their spirit. Break their ability to resist the truth. That's what we're supposed to do. Of course, anyway, here's the situation right now. This is the way it exists right now. What we're saying to boss man is we are already passed all the tests. We didn't pass every test that you got out, every one of them. And everything we didn't told them was true including they knocked us upside the head. I got creases in my head right now. You can see them from way over there. You can see these creases, right? When you're in the hospital, you can, they, you can really see them then, but you can see them, they creases. On the picture, they used to have a saying, man, I whip you upside your head till your head rope like oatmeal. That's the way my head looked. And that photograph. La Tatraba. That's Martin Luther King plus. Right? White folks and opiates. Wali Yun Hamimun. We're going to be they Wali and they're going to be warm and friendly folks. Right? We've been pushing that and pushing that. Okay. 
they should believe it, but it don't make no difference whether they believe it. Here's what we're telling them. You are in hot water right now, boss, bad hot water. This thing, the world has done changed in a, in a hot minute. It's done changed a hot minute. You don't have nobody that know what to do with this stuff. They don't have nobody. They don't have nobody, I'll say it again, they don't have nobody running nothing that knows anything about what to do now except steal more money. Remember, we always talk about there's five or 10 percent, maybe 15 percent humans in the FBI and all that. This lecture is for them. Look at your president. Your president. You good FBI's, y'all sent me a message one time talking about it's not you, it's the, what do they say? Uh, elements, rogue elements in the NSA. That's what they, I showed the, le the letter here. Uh, it might have been 15 years, a while back. The FBI was here the other week, what was his name? George Armstrong. George, look, y'all got a crackhead running your country. The stupidest man. Now imagine what the world is looking at. Imagine what the world is thinking about your boss. The first G20 conference, he walks in. I never saw this in my life. All the white folks are standing there. He pushes him aside. I said, wait a minute. I don't believe that. This guy is worse than a school, a fifth grade dummy in the schoolhouse. He's a literal dummy and he didn't scare them. He didn't scare the, the, the old FBI man, the tall guy. He talk about him and they don't say nothing. He didn't scare them people. Y'all want freedom? Come get the brother. Me. No, psychological guerrilla warfare. I slapped that man all around. He talking about it. We're going to get so. If they get Joe Biden is almost dead. He might die before the damn election. Right? And he can't remember with cue cards. They're trying to pump him up and help him a little, but he ain't doing no good. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, he worse than me. You know, when you get old, you can't remember your kid's name. My father would say, boy, go get that. He didn't forgot my name. He's a nice man. He's my father. But, you know, at a certain age, sometimes that stuff slip you. This boy is like that all the time. And I told y'all that we're going to. And there he is. Right? He'd do that. He'd do that. And they're going to set him up against this lying bamboozler. The guy is a bamboozler. And Donald Trump ain't nothing but a big old sissy. And all the women telling on him, he ain't doing nothing to him because if he was hooking them women up, they wouldn't be telling on him. They'd be saying, come on back, bro. You know, hook me up again. Right? Them kind of girls. The lady that's a strip tease lady type. Right? He ain't hooking nobody up. He just, <laughs> and it stopped. <laughs> right? Hey, man, look, I'm telling you. Y'all want help, you give me a call. Now, there's a condition. I'm not going to help you till you clean up all this stuff that y'all been doing. Y'all been doing all this stuff. You can... Uh, maybe let it ease into the news and use the case in California. You know, and I get a little time on the news and I say something nice and then another little time. And y'all know how to fix it. You got the other niggas that can't even talk and they on every program you see, right? Everybody that don't have no sense they got Brian Becker. Remember all the people from the old days? All you're going to look for them, they in the news. They don't know nothing. Right? 
but they're in the news. They put them in the news. Well, now you're Boss Man Jr. What it is is you're in a situation where you can't afford to do that. Your country is going down. Your prestige is gone. And it, it is actually just to sit and watch it. First, I said, I'm just putting my hands in my pocket. I ain't doing nothing. But then that ain't uh, technically, you know, that's every now and then. Because remember our mission. We talk about influence the direction of change. Okay, FBI, all of y'all, the few percentage, y'all got to take a chance too. You can't just sit back and think, I'm going to run and jump off a bridge with flaming drawers on and try to tell you all the truth. No, 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 no. It's already proved. I don't have to show you all nothing. If you don't know by now where the brother coming from and got the sense to do it. Now, remember, you all think, well, we give a nigga a little, uh, little edge. He might do this and he might do that. That's not possible. You done tested too many times. Go back in your record. Go back in your record. You keep records pretty good. This is what we always hear. From the first offer back in 63, you could be like Posey. That was a drag boy with the radio. He could walk around and do whatever he wanted. I told the captain, I don't want to be like Posey. I don't even know if I told him. I just thought in my mind, I don't want to be like that. This is the guy everybody want to be like. He can walk around. You know, we're in a little young man's penitentiary. Uh, Preston School of Industry. And they got a drag boy. A drag boy is a young Negro that uh, he's pretty good size, you know. Uh, technically, he's kind of tough, too. Everybody else marches where they go, but he can walk out of ranks and he can wear his own clothes because he got juice, drag boy. They call him a drag boy. And the captain was telling me, you can be like that. This come from God. That's why I read the stuff about Yusuf all the time. I didn't, I, that's, whatever it is, that came from Allah. I cannot join the white man. I can't, there's nothing I can do. When I was getting cases a long time ago, I never even considered being a snitch. Never even, you could get this, I, I never even, I thought they, I remember in 67 they said, you don't have to do all this. You could just be like Bojack. Bojack's a big dope dealer on the other side of town, big rich dope dealer. So I don't want to be like Bojack. You know, or he wanted me to tell on Bo. they wanted me, now the whole vice squad is there. I said, here's what we'll do. We'll play cops and robbers. Just like y'all run around, try to catch us, and we'll run around, try to get away. Simple as that. That's what we'll do. Never even considered it. I don't care. This is a gift from God because I can imagine what the Negroes do when they sit in there because the first thing the police tell you, they wouldn't do it for you. I said, I don't look in another nigga's mirror. When I look in the mirror, I see myself. I don't care what they see. It's just like the Negro imams and all of them. I don't care what they, how good they, they ain't got it good. You know why? They eat and slop off the crackers table. They eat and slop. The white man feed them slop. That's what they feed. The brothers, they feed them slop. And I don't need that slop. I don't want to be. And then the other gift is that Allah give you a chance to get all the riches of the society. 
on your own. So you already know, wait a minute, hold it. I know what wealth is. I know what power is. I know what fame. I already know that. And then I know what this is. That does not equal this. No kind of way. One may be two and this is a thousand. At least. So here's what we're saying. Just like Joseph said, hey, you got to clear up the thing with the women. Boss man, you got to clear up everything. I ain't lifting a finger for you. For the people, of course. Do you clear up all of this? You got to clear it up. I've been thinking about this for years. You can tell we've been thinking about this exact thing for years and years and years. It is absolutely no surprise, neither the lecture nor the environment or nothing else. It ain't no surprise. It's in all the notes. It's been in all the talks. And we've been just sitting around here almost waiting for it and having a good time. We've been having a good time. That's why the tests never change. Because in order for it to be, to, to be reliable, you can't change any variables. If you add a different variable, it adds another different reliability to the test. Something's going to be different. So we play dumb and just keep running the same tests on white man. Y'all fail. Y'all fail. You haven't won nothing against one nigga. This is impossible. I don't... Uh, Basically, y'all are all stupid. Stupid. The United States government is stupid. Literally stupid. I mean stupid. You can't make peace with nobody. You can't. You got all these people. It reminds me of when the brothers. I have a lot of friends who was pimps. And they was telling me a couple of them. Was, Man, you got to. Because you see pictures with me with all these guys. Man, you got to pimp them, girl. I said, these are my friends. What are you talking about? These are my friends. Now, they, in that supposed world, you ain't supposed to have friends. I said, man, these girls, we grew up together, went to this kiddie school together. And uh, I take them out to all the clubs because we're rich and they want to have a good time. And they like going out and... Uh, Riding in the pretty cars, and they're my friends. That's what we do. We go out on, on every weekend. I take them out, and they sing to everybody. They say, I feel like movie stars. I said, What would I do if I get rich and tell everybody that grew up with me, y'all poor niggas, y'all, you know, right? That would be ridiculous. That's what everybody else do. When y'all get big money, you leave the girls that helped you and go try to get them yellow, skinny-looking old women with an old nap of funny hair. These is my homegirls. And you know what? They stuck with me more than anybody. Just for, you know, your regular neighborhood uh, girls. We just had a good time. I mean, they wasn't friends like you go with. They, just, they could have boyfriends. And they say, God, pimp them girls. But you know what? I could put $50,000 in the house. I could put $50,000 in the house. All right. Uh, you know, they had a little back places where you could drive up. I just uh, put stuff there and drive up and drive off. I said, a lady to make the kind of money. Now, the only thing I'm sorry about is I didn't help them more. Because their value... I never gave them their value. I mean, I gave them more. I gave them a lot. I mean, they had a, they had, they live, when they think about their life, most of them passed away. When they think about the good life, they always talk about that period. That was the shining part of their whole life. Not only me, all the people in Oakland is like that. This my age, that was the peak part of their life. They remember it's like talking about high school or something. When you go see somebody, the great years was they high school or something like, hey, man, the point I made with them, I said a lady would have to have a rubber 
vagina, an elastic vagina, for them to make the kind of money. You know, I was thinking about, they found out later, but the kind of money I was making. Pimping, I, I, I really, because my, my friends were like rich and they were poor. They was poor, real poor. I mean, they had to hustle to get carnals and places to stay. And I mean, uh, I mean, and they might have four or five ladies. And, and then whatever they did get, they came and s sit up and bought cocaine for me. Right? So who's pimping? I said, pimping? I said, man, I'm not going to pimp those. These are sisters. These are... Plus, we had a corner of black nationalism, too. You know, corner of black nationalism. Corner, a good corner. A good slice of black nationalism. Black woman is the mother of civilization and all that stuff. Yeah, it's some of it stick. It's good. This is our point. Boss man, you're insane and cowardly. For all of y'all, the Senate and the Congress and who else? You let old Mr. Barr, the attorney, somebody like that, you let them do anything they want. That's pitiful. You let this big old red-headed sissy. He's a big old sissy. He old as I am almost. The nigga is probably 72 or 73. I'm 75. But he's an old nigga, old old cracker. And he ain't tough. He can't do... And he, he, the man ha, does not have a memory. I can slap him all over the building myself. I, I look forward to y'all gonna call me down there. Y'all don't have nobody to go up against him. Just call me and I'll call him out. Just give me a little bit of stuff on the news. So I, and I, then I know how to bait him. I'll bait him and bait him. And, and I'll just whoop his behind. I can't lose because that's the way we think. We can't lose. And we'll make a fool out of him. You can't make no fool out of nobody that's already a fool. He just, it don't, it ain't, you know, whatever he say, it don't count. I don't have to respond to him. I say what I want. You, that's what you need. You need somebody to clown that fool. Clown him. Let's sit up there. They have people fact checking on, on the fool. And they have a list to go around the block of uh, facts that he don't... I said, you don't have to fact check. I said, just give me three or four facts and then the rest will just clown the man. They don't know how to do it. They don't know how to clown. Negroes know how to clown each other. We know how to clown that boy. He can't win. And if you make it prominent enough, you know, now you ain't got all day to do this like uh, years and years. <clears throat> this is a time specific thing. This is, it's time for specific. No, I'm just telling them, okay, is what I said true? Have we sit right here and been right on the money with everything that's going on in the United States and the world? Is that true? That's true. Okay. And it's beyond Negro wisdom, uh, blah, 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 blah. Right? And they ain't got nobody down there like that. In fact, they got one person he served over here, served, but they ain't got nobody been all around the world. And they know what I'm talking about is true. When I go out the house or in the house, boss man is with me in huge numbers all the time for years. So he knows the more you know, the more you get nervous. You don't forget you're nervous. Look, I'm not running for Congress or nothing. Uh, I know you have heard this before. Let me put it this way. I am an honest man. Let's just get that out of the way. That's what I know y'all say it all the time. And you probably don't believe it. That's what everybody say. 
I'm an honest man. I'm not going to get up there and go crazy. I'm going to do what I've been doing all the time. Trying to do right for the biggest amount of people. And for your wealth. Put me over the storehouses because I know they value. That's what Joseph said, right? It's been headed here all the time. Put me over the storehouses. However you fix it, that's okay. You know, maybe a little news. I, by the way, how, many, how is it that I, I don't want to be on the news, but what happened to RT? What happened to every, how come I don't go get no invites? Now that ain't, that actually is not nice. And I got more sense than all of them. Tell the truth. I got more sense than everybody y'all got on the thing. They come asking me over at We Act Radio, what do you think about what Brian Becker said? I said, yeah, it sounds like ABC or CBS. What do you? And then I gave him a, a front page newspaper from Iran, you know. I said, this is from the horse's mouth. What are you talking about? What did he say? I said, sounds just like ABC or CBS. But it ain't no revolution, right? It ain't no rebellion. So, dear people, that's what's called the Yusuf Dilemma. That's what the Yusuf Dilemma is. The Yusuf Dilemma is that you have Yusuf sitting right in front of you. But remember, history is strange. When we was living through a life in the 60s, uh, people didn't pay attention to it. I paid attention to it. I didn't bring some pictures. I had some pictures of white folks. Uh, every, you know, because, see, y'all ever heard of Haight-Ashbury? Haight-Ashbury is in San Francisco. It's where, in 1966, they had a, a song, if you're going to San Francisco, be sure to wear some flowers in your hair. That was wonderful. That was the white kids woke up all of a sudden. And they was nice. You talking about the biggest shock of my life when I came home in 65? I left in 62. And everybody was segregated and this, that, and other. They were still segregated, but I came home and I looked at all the white ladies and the white people from Berkeley coming all through the... Oh, what y'all doing here? First thing the white girls say, I'm doing everything my mama told me not to do. Was first, of course, don't mess with them niggas. Right? That's the first thing the mama going to tell them. Don't mess with no niggas. And that's what they, I mean, and friendly. And it was really like, I, I said, what's wrong with y'all? What, what's happening here? It was a shock to come home in 1965. But remember, in 62, it wasn't nothing but a couple of Freedom Riders and all that. And that whole period, we had Birmingham in 63, and, and we had to march on Washington, you know, and we had, and Malcolm was martyred in 65, yeah, just before I got out. All of that stuff happened while I was in the kitty jail, well, the penitentiary. When I came home in 65, hey, it was different. It was different. I mean, different, different, different. And that's the way things happen sometime now. All of a sudden, the things that were important before, look, you have a global lockdown. Three months ago, you never even thought this was possible. How could you have a... Everybody can't go anywhere. What? In the whole world, everybody locked down? Now, you have to make serious, if you want to get through this, you have to get a program that brings the best out of the people, not the worst. And you don't have to take a chance. Guess what? You can hit the heat a little bit if you want. You're going to have to trust me. 
<laughs> That's too bad. I've been dealing with you all these years, and I ain't mad. Tell the truth. I ain't mad about nothing. In fact, I'm here trying to help you. But you're going to have to clear this up first. I'm not lifting a finger during this period till y'all clear that up. Because I know the value of the stuff. The human value, the psychological value, the emotional value, all of it. You don't know the value or you'd be doing something about it. You can't speak about it because you're scared. Can you imagine all of you are scared? It's not only the Muslims. The white folks are scared, sitting right there shaking in their boots and that big old punk up there talking out the side of his mouth. And we just slapped the spit out of his mouth. You gotta, you look, you call the people that's useful for the time period. Anybody know that? Well, you get a tool that works good for what you want. You need a hammer to beat something, you go with a hammer, right? You need something to pull it out, or a driver, you go get that. Okay, right now is the time. You know, the white folks in Germany, <laughs> they put Hitler in power because they thought this guy is a clown. He won't be able to do, you know what I mean, the big rich white folks, Germans. This is a, they used to call them the beer hall puts. So we put this clown in, in here. And he'll look at the mustache. He, he looks like, you know, well, Charlie Chaplin and stuff like that. Right? Zeke Howell and all that. They got that boy in there and he flipped on them. He flipped on them good. He had his program and he ruined the world. Ruined the whole world. You keep this bum in here. If you put him back another four years, he'll have the whole world. You think he, he just getting started. And y'all hired him to do a little job for you. Now y'all is all got a goose step with him. You're just a bunch of dummies. You made a mistake. You the, the, Y'all put that boy in there. <laughs> and now you, if you get out of line, he'll send you to a concentration camp somewhere. Yes, he will. And nobody will say nothing to him. Nobody. He's a dictator. He's the dictator of America. He's a dictator. Zeke Howell, that's what they ought to say. Now, we told him that in day one. We call it Hitlerianism. I don't know if y'all remember that. It's Hitlerianism. He used, I'm telling you, I was sitting there. See, I've heard that before. Not that I knew what he was going to say. Deutschland, the fatherland, defend the fatherland, da, 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 the chancellor 1933 and 34. And you look up in 1935, he's on a roll. 1936, he didn't put all his homeboys in there and they got the Luftwaffe flying all over the place. And by 38, he didn't took all of Europe just about. Just walked in and took it. Sudetenland, Czechoslovakia, he have just knocked everybody over. And now it's too late. This guy that y'all got in there, he's Hitlerian, but a comic Hitlerian. He's not a focused Hitlerian like Hitler was, you know what I mean? See, Hitler had a plan, you know, final solution and all that. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just goes in and knocks everything down and don't build nothing. He's just a jackass. And they scared. Look at the people. The people are scared to tell him, look, I sit there, you know, I can't wait to get back and turn on the news because the people, my family, oh, why are you sitting? I said, I can't leave. The boy lies so bad. I can't leave. I just have to Watch him sit there and lie. And he lies every day and he messes up and he sticks his foot in his mouth. I mean, I don't spend that much time there, but just, I don't believe that. Look what he said. And then I sit there, you know, and uh, everybody going about their business. 
and I'm laughing and talking to the TV and everything, and they just say, everybody in the family is going to But it's hilarious. It's hilarious. And other white folks, the doctor that got some sense, I'll change the subject in a minute. Don said, yeah, we're going to have a little, an elixir probably by next week. And then we're going to have 50 million such, whatever they, it is, within three days. And everybody want them, they could have them. If you want a shot, a uh, fix up, you could have it. Now, then the poor little man come up there. <laughs> He has to unlie all of that. You ever see the little man come up there? And the little doctor man, he said, uh, he actually have gotten good at unlying this liar. You know what I mean? Now, me and you, we just said, man, this boy, Don, how many of the things you said? That's what we, how many? No, we ain't got, it, they ain't made them. Actually, Don, don't y'all remember you and Pence was having a prayer vigil and said, this, we're going to pray this away, and it'll be gone in a couple of days. That's what he said. Then they play it back for him. You, that ain't what I meant. I meant this. And they, he do it. Look, <laughs> the white folks, I, I, I kind of like watching it, especially if you're a Negro woman. The Negro woman, Miss Anish, whatever her name is. You got to stop coming in here messing with me. You don't know how to ask no questions. All of y'all is crazy. <laughs> he really does that. He really does it. I mean, and I'm not exaggerating. He tells the people, you're stupid. You work for this news. That's fake news. That's this and that. And couldn't nobody do it. Suppose Obama did one thing that he do. Any one thing. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Even dumb George couldn't get away with stuff like that. Nobody. I'm telling you. White folks, y'all need the brother. I'll rescue y'all if y'all clean up all of this other stuff. And I'll whoop the big monster. You remember? Whenever society needs a, a helping hand. Uh, they go call somebody that was in obscurity. This is history. In obscurity. And they call them out and they said, we want you to whoop the giant, uh, the monster or whatever. That's the way it is now. That's all. And all we want to do is influence the direction of change. That's what we said and that's what we mean. And if I'm lying, just clip the brakes on my car when I go out in Colorado, go on out, you know, just do something and disappear. <laughs> if somebody up and disappear, ain't nobody, ain't nobody saying nothing about all this. They put me in jail and they come in, I'm in the masjid, taking a bath and all that and y'all take me out half naked. You know the police came in Oakland, y'all saw the picture when I don't have no shirt on. I was taking a coffee enema and they knew it. Come on out of there. I said, y'all is stupid. I'm not, I just pull this thing out of my behind. I'm sitting on the toilet first. I'm not going to be coming out of here and then, uh, you know, yeah, they know what they're doing. And I'm not mad. I just chalk it up to, uh, let's call it insensitivity. <laughs> Okay, so reliability, in order to, uh, there's a lot of things that, uh, that uh, we want to do. I don't know if we have time to talk about all of them today. But the main thing we want to do is make America, America the good, not America the great. And y'all don't know how to do it. You're not, you're not, the Americans that get in a covered wagon and ride all across the country and kill up Indians and stuff. 
This is the way it is. You might be a little lazy, y'all, and mean. But even not that mean. The people are sitting there duh, 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 all day. And so they're not looking at what, what was there. Maybe they don't care. You put me in there, I'll help the American people get back to America, but America the good. Not America like it was before. Mm -mm. That America is gone. Do you know a lot of times you, you have heroes in history and you know some people have pictures of the heroes on the wall. Imagine if your president, think about it, his hero is Hugh Hefner. The old white man just died. He had one of them silk night clothes on for the, all his rest of his life, mostly. He's 90 something years old, almost 100. Shriveled all up. And the playboy, he bring the worst out of people, the playboys, to put a bunny. Y'all white women talking about you like Trump, and he'd stick a cottontail on your behind. That's all. That's right, Hugh Hefner, playboy bunny. It's so crazy, I see y'all laughing, but imagine, that's what they're doing. That's not sane. Tell the truth, it's not sane, but that's what they're doing. You got a president that said on the news before he was elected, yes, I feel on their pussy and they like it because I'm famous, right? And everybody heard him say that. Then he said, I didn't say that. <laughs> and the white women voted for that, not the smart ones, but the slow ones, right? And Hugh Hefner is his idol, not George Washington or somebody like that. That ain't no good, but at least, <laughs> at least George wasn't sitting there in his night clothes. Look, didn't he say that? That's his, his, his not idol, but whatever it is. That's his model, Hugh Hefner. He want to be like that. I know even we like to stretch out, but I would have never thought that was possible. And I never thought y'all would stoop as low and as stupid as you are. I don't mean call because the Quran says bring to the way of thy Lord of wisdom and beautiful preaching. But y'all are below beautiful preaching right now. Y'all got to get let somebody help you. And here's what we'll do, and I'll leave in a minute. They say get small wins. So if, you know, not if you put me in there, but uh, give me a little access to, you know, we'll help raise, you know, we've been spending years on psychology, sociology, all that stuff y'all like, but Islam too. Now we got a serious mix. <laughs> Boy, you think. We got a Negro mix. And you think them people that sold that snake oil, you take one drink of this and it'll give you, fix you up, right? It was a speedball, of course. It was heroin and cocaine mixed together. So it's a speedball. The heroin in that, that drink, you know the old snake oil? One dollar a bottle. You could imagine a dollar was a lot of money then. The heroin would take all the pain out of you. I don't care what you had, that heroin, because remember it was legal then, up to 1914, would take all the pain out of your body and the cocaine would boost you up psychologically. So it was a speedball, all that snake oil. A cure-all in a bottle, you take one drink of this and then you cured, because you was addicted to it after a while. You had to buy. The first two bottles, you buy some, you might not feel pretty good. After a while, you got to buy a dollar in those days. That's a lot of money. People made $30 a month. 
uh, stuff like that. So you had to spend that money on that. Uh, anyway, maybe two, three bottles a month. That was a lot of snake oil. Now, here we are now. We have an elixir. Let's call it the Negro elixir. Now, you know Negroes is good at whooping up little concoctions. A few months of this psychological mumbo-jumbo and rebuilding, let's call it small wins. Not big wins, first small wins, just a little wins. We just, first we'll just make fun of Don. We'll do this and we'll do that. Then we'll, uh, and you look up in a year or two, we will be ready to make a new world. And you can see that we can do it because ain't nobody been to work in over a month. And the government's still able to pay everybody. So the government's money is worth how much faith you give it. That's what it's worth. So had the government let us stay off for a year and fix the world. Make that a demand. Hey man, we need a year to put this thing together. We need a few months just to visualize what we want. Yeah, why not? This is a new dispensation is what we do with it. And as we said, we just want to influence the direction of change. We don't want to make nobody do nothing. You study the people that want to make everybody do this and make everybody do that and you study the world that they done hooked up. That's why this thing about give you some insight into history and the operation of things. You study dictatorships. You study all those things. Hey man, you won't want to do none of them. Okay. Iran is doing good. Very, very good. And we're not going to do much or say nothing that might interfere with what they're doing because they're doing a good job. I'm not talking about the bums around here. The brothers are bums. But we're not going to call them bums because we don't want them. Right now, we're just going to say, because see, Iran got it together. Now, Iran and us, we're in the same boat. Whatever happens to them, they sanction Iran, they do this, they do that to Iran. They sanction us, they cut us off, they do the same thing. They've been doing it, it's the same thing. Uh, and we didn't talk ourselves in the boss man's head, boy, are you telling that we are in boss man's head? Don't make no difference what he say. We are in boss man's head. But, uh, and I'll close with this. You good FBI agents, that's 5, 10, 15 percent of you, you got to take a chance. You got to manipulate the system to where if you scatter the boss man, all you got to do is put me in a couple of spots to where I'll be to do the spoke stuff. I'll take care of all of that. All you got to know is that I know when to do it and I know when to go home and take a rest. Yeah, that's what the 70, see, I'm 75 years old. I have been studying diligently for over the last 50 years. Everybody and everything. If you think I'm lying, just take notes or when I've been wrong about stuff. Just take notes about who, what. What, Abdul Malik now, Mukhtar now, no, I was right there watching. I told Abdul Malik in 1987 that you are the police. Finish, finish, finish. I said, but just cooperate with them and then 
give a brother a little help. He didn't get no brother no help. He calls by here and said, bring her down 87, and then gonna have a, every day gonna say, she's gonna make somebody a good wife. And I'm supposed to be stupid. Like, well, she's your wife. But he, no, she didn't, he didn't brought her there. He didn't brought her there from where? From all African Revolutionary People's Party. Who's that? That's, what's his name? What's his name? Kwame Torre. Yeah, Kwame Torre, uh, you know, Stokely Carmichael. Who was she with? She was with Stokely Carmichael's second in command. And he was in the army. I said, how can you be in the army and be running for, what's his name? It didn't make no sense. It didn't make no sense. Unless she was with him to keep her eye on da 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 and da 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 da. It was all there. It was all there. It's never, never hidden. Once you get the, the, the game, you, you could see through all of that. You know what makes the white man game heavy? Is that everybody else is light. It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. It ain't no, once you know what it is, once you know the trick, like the card tricks and all of that, once you know what the trick is, they can't, nobody can trick you no more. But nobody can scare you no more. That's the way the white man is. The reason I talk like I'm talking, because it's, it's nothing. I don't say this, but they're girlified, whatever that used to mean. Them jokers is girlified. I don't have nothing to do with it. We pro-girl, don't worry about nothing. But for a boy to be girlified, I mean, in the old time sense, Arnold Schwarzenegger called them girly men. Remember that? Girly man. So if he said it, you can't blame me for nothing. Those people are girly men. That's they are, they're girly men. And now they want me and you to follow them. Ah, uh, uh uh. Mr. and Mrs. FBI, you got to use your, the last bit of your, if you don't, look, if you don't use your stuff now, Don going to ruin everything. He ain't, you ain't going to have nothing. You keep on, when you come around and you pop your badge, just the FBI, everybody going to start laughing and rolling around. Yes, they are. They're going to say, this is for the FBI. It's like a joke. You're going to be a joke. Don making you a joke already. Look what they do with all the FBI people. It says, what kind of news is it? Fake news, y'all, fake news. You let him push you around. And I'm not saying just him, it's the system. The system is bad. If we don't fix this go round, hey, you talking about the concentration of wealth and the concentration of resources? I almost say you better put me in there because these white folks that's got all this money, it's a game they run. They've been running it so long. You get everything up real high, then drag it down. And whoever got the money buy everybody's stuff for nickels on the, on the dollar. That's what they do. They've been, they do. It's like a harvest for them. The big rich people, it's like they planting seeds. They, they, oh, let's get the economy going. Oh, I was looking in 87, and the stock market kept going up and up and up. I said, but they're not producing nothing. They're sending everything overseas. Why is the stock market going up? Then, a couple of years, you see Imran crash. It goes down to 6,000 or 600. And then, after a while, they blow it back up, blow it back up, blow it back up. And then the stock market, up till a few days ago, that boy was on a nosedive. And now it's stabilized no matter what news you give it. They got 20 something million people, right? Six, five million people today on the employment line. The first time they did it, that went down. 
Last week when they did another seven million or something, it didn't have no effect on the stock market. That means they did not stabilize it. It ain't going nowhere till they get ready. It need to take a big dive. If it was going by the news, the emotionalism of the news. So many people unemployed. Well, it would go down. Why? Because they're not working. It ain't went nowhere. Shoot, the stock market today gained about 30, 30 something. It was going down for a while, but it ain't following no rule except they tell the stock market what to do. Yes, and they've been doing it. So anyway, thank y'all very much. Are there any questions or comments about uh, anything? Remember, I want to participate in America the Great. America the Good, excuse me, thank you very much. America the Good. Bump America the Great. Strack that from the record. I didn't mean it because I don't know how dumb the judge sounds. Strack that from the record. Now how the people going to say, I didn't hear that. The last thing that I want to close with, the system is mean beyond any. I had some pictures of uh, the white kids, that, uh, you know, Y'all call them hippies and stuff, flowers all in their hair and all that. But, you know, at big festivals that I used to go, I used to go to the white folks' festivals in the day and the Negro festivals at night. Yeah. So we know when we talk about white folks, we was there with white folks. All them flower haired, I have the pictures to show you. All them flower in the hair, white folks. Kate Ashbury was a great experiment. Boy, was it. It was the greatest experiment. This, you should have seen the white folks. But the mean old white man, he gave Negroes, you know, white man specific, he gave the Negroes Heron and stuff and killed that movement. And he gave white folks Crank and LSD and run them crazy. And they had leaders like Timothy Leary. Timothy Leary is one of them Pied Pipers that go get everybody, he's a, uh, what they, huh? Yeah. Turn on, tune in, and turn out, something like that. Yeah. Got all them white kids run them crazy. And ain't nothing happened to him, okay? They've been at this misleading game. They studied LSD way back in the 50s and stuff like that. They gave one to one soldier, this boy jumped out of the window in 61. They know what it do to you. But they gave this specific, they gave white folks crank, and you know crank, it ain't, they ain't changing. Crank is uh, crystal meth. You know, when they talk about crack for niggas, crank is the same thing, except, look at here, except you can stay up for three and four days at a time. If you weigh 200 pounds a day in two weeks, you're going to weigh 150, and after that, 125, you're gone, because it's just cranks you up and off you go. <laughs> That's why they call it crank, because it cranks you up. Now you hear the sad stories. Uh, dear white folks, just to let you know, we're in this together. The only reason we're not out telling y'all about opiates and all that, actually, technically, yeah. I don't have enough courage to go to y'all's churches and say, let me talk to you about it. So just overlook my inability to, but that's what I've been wanting to do for a long time. And just talk to y'all and tell you, uh, opiates, the way, well, everybody know by now. That's the thing about being slow, is by the time you get to the people to tell them, 
<laughs> they done already found out. But we got a few things we can still talk to you about opiates, about black tar, heroin, about all that stuff that they're giving y'all. They gave it to us first. And uh, we want to see, what would we say, America the good. We want to be a part of a program that brings the good out of the human being. So we want to see uh, a program that makes women not stick a cotton tail on their behind, right? That's what the president, that's, what he, that's his hero. He stuck cotton tails on the, does, he did it professionally, a playboy bunny, half naked. And y'all drawing, sucking it up like it's all right. Yeah, it ain't all right. Because those people could be trained and educated and be very high quality human beings. They could make a new world where a woman wouldn't have to be that type of thing to make a dumb man seem like that they have some value. That's what, uh, sure. And not overdoing it. And then we'll get families back together to where people won't feel like they got to, two girls got to get together, two boys got to get together. They didn't make that almost natural. Every time I look at TV, I see two boys giving each other a big kiss. I said, that's pretty serious. Or oh, I ain't talking about nobody. If you want to do it, that's your business. It's your business. <laughs> but <laughs> it's so common in the media that you done made natural unnatural. And unnatural, natural. Okay. We'll fix that too. But I mean, ain't nobody gonna beat you on the head or run you around the corner or make you do nothing. But if you have a world that is balanced, then the people will get back to be being balanced. If you have, most of the problems will probably be semi-solved with time anyway. interracialism. Shoot, I think the biggest, some statistics said that they got more interracial kids than anybody now. That's what they said. And now all the commercials, not that I watch a lot of TV, but every couple is interracial. I see a black man with a white woman, that's mostly what you see. But I see a couple of Whatever it is, reverse. I said, well, look here. I said, them white folks down in Georgia and Mississippi must be turned over in their grave. Boy, they, I know they mad, but they might as well accept it. It's, you can't stop that. People are people, you know. And kids are kids. Like, you just try to make kids like the way we talk. I just talk regular talk. You know, I like white folks too, but the language I use, crackers and peckerwoods, dad, that's racist. I said, well, if I don't call them white folks, what am I gonna call them? They're white folks. I can't, I don't know no other name. Then I don't, it's not bad, it's just, they're just white folks. Or peckerwoods, they're peckerwoods. Woody wood, pecker, pecker, pecker. Peck. They, they peck of woods. I, I don't have, that's what they call them. They're not bad. I like them. I want to go help them. I want to go down there in Virginia if they don't string me up, you know, and try to help them. I really do. I really do. So those problems, we're thinking too small as a human being, as humans. We're thinking too, we're making big things big and small things, little, whatever, vice versa. We got to do better. So are there any questions or any comments about anything that was said today? Any questions, any comments at all?
Gibbles, yeah. okay. um, so, you know, this, this, this just goes to your point. You know, I'm not sure if you knew that. No, I didn't. I just knew. No, okay, every day when I get home, uh, on Netflix, all this, all those old war films, I didn't seen all of them so much that I already know that there's nothing. Uh, World War II in color, the war. I've seen all of that, let's say, two, three hundred times, all of them. Uh, but I do it now for different reasons. Now, I look at the insanity, the insanity of the slaughter. You know what I mean? The slaughter. When they first got the camera on the battlefield, was during the Civil War. You could see flies all on the bodies and people and their hands stuck up. When they was burying the people at Chosin Reservoir, they were frozen and couldn't move. And they hands and that's, 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 that's insanity. That's real insanity. But they think it's normal. To make war is normal. But to hug people is abnormal, right? Just think, for the police to chase you down and give you a big hug, that's crazy. But to, for the police to shoot you down like a dog in the street is normal. It's normal, right? Think how far the human being this is the human being that we're talking about. The human being, not to be making a long list, but have those things inside of them. You can go in and help elevate the good. So a good society would be where most of the people are balanced and moving toward good. And there are people in a society trained to help people who are maladjusted. For instance, in a, in a high school, or you'd have a team, maybe the most popular people at the school, their team, and they spot people who are loners and who are, you know, feel not accepted. And they're accepted by everybody. It's their job to spot those people and bring them in, make them feel like human beings. You cut down on, make, you have mass killings down to zero almost. Just for simple stuff like that. They don't think like that. They don't think like that. That okay, you're popular. You, you guys, you're the in crowd. You know every high school got the in crowd. Maybe the football chief and maybe the basketball star. You know what I mean? And then the little in crowd. Every school have them. But it'd be a certain number of those, that those people, that's their job. That's your extra credit. You get an extra credit for this. You get an extra credit for spotting the people who feel left out and making them feel important and comfortable. That's your job. That's your extra credit. Right? Little simple stuff. Simple stuff. This is, I'm a Negro. If I can think of little dumb stuff like that, and they got all these PhDs, something is wrong. Y'all need the Negro instead of all them PhDs. Because they ain't doing you no good. Uh, uh, anyway, the Hitler lectures, I, I, knew, I knew the lectures because I've heard them before. Yeah. Yeah. 
Nobody tell him. And he can do anything he want. And it's all on the surface. It's not even hidden. It's like, yeah, I do what I want. And they accepting it. That's the way Hitler was. Hitler just, yeah, this is what we're going to do. And everybody went along with it. And look at all the German people he got killed. Good God Almighty. The place was destroyed. And look at the harm that they did. They went all over that part of the world. Mass murder, mass slaughter. But it's not just them, it's the rest of the world. What did the world do to them? World War I, they made them pay all that money, they made them do all kind of jump through loops. So Hitler was just ready, he, he come in, they was ready for him. Just like these dumb white folks, the dumb, I mean the real dummies, these people blaming us for everything. And one people that ain't did nothing is Negroes. We ain't did nothing. At all. Nothing at all. It's the Zionists that's got them take sending their children overseas to get blown up and foxholes and killed and everything. And they talking about Jews will not replace us. Marching down there, you could tell them was government white folks. You could tell they, because they had a white nationalist, something or other, and didn't nobody come. The other white nationalists know them boys as police. You know, them, they know who those people are. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, Adolf Hitler uh, gave several speeches. Uh, he had Mein Kampf, My Struggle, and also uh, the press here throughout history, the last historical period, last 70 something years, the white folks play Hitler's, uh, they you see him ranting and raving but do you ever see the translation for what he's saying? The capitalist bankers, we need national socialism to share. So, so technically, with money and everything, he made it good for Germans for a couple of years, right? With national socialism. And the, the great bankers he was talking about, you don't see them, you don't see that being translated, what he's saying. So he was not an idiot. Well, he was, he, he, he went over the line. And it's good he went over the line because he wouldn't have, uh, we'd all be speaking German and Japanese. If they didn't go crazy in Japan and Germany, if Adolf Hitler would have just started the wars and let his generals run it, they done knocked everybody out of the box. They done knocked everybody, they done knocked them out of the box. Or if he'd have planned it better, take over Europe first, then hit Russia, then, no, he just jumped up. Same thing with the Japanese. Good thing they uh, moved in a hurry, but technically, from those days, do you know the winner always inducted the minority to keep an eye on the majority? So Adolf Hitler would not have enslaved us. He would have put us in charge because we know all the white folks. We work in the houses, right? The Japanese would have did the same thing. You know, 50,000 Indian troops surrendered, fighting for the British to the Japanese. Why? Because they was fighting for independence in, in, uh, uh, in, in India, and the Japanese told them, 
we all friends, we people of color. Of course, they was lying, but they didn't play that card right. Good thing they didn't. It's better for white folks than for us. Because remember, we could, if they hung us all, we still didn't have nothing to lose. But if, they, if the Germans took over America, because Adolf Hitler said himself, if I had so many thousands of troops like that, I could do such and such. Talking about Negroes. Talking about Negroes. And the mean old Japanese, you know, oh man. Those people are just too mean, that's all. Uh, they're just too mean. But remember, they call Japanese honorary white folks, honorary Europeans. No, technically, they call them the white man of Asia. That's what they call the Japanese. Yep. Yes, indeed. So now is our chance. We really ought to uh, try to pull this off. And if we get a shot, we're not going to blow it. The Negroes always blow. You give them, they don't, not famous, they're not just that. You give big money, they go and they blow it most of the time. You know, it used to be football, basket, all them people, they used to blow it. Boxers, they would blow, they'd wind up broke. Or winning the lottery, they would wind up uh, broke. Well, we've had all that. So if we ease into any position of power, don't worry, boss man. We're going to do the Joe Lewis stuff. We're not going to shake hands with no white women or nothing. Nah, I'm just joking, of course. But you know, our Jack Johnson treated white folks so bad that they had a rule for Joe Lewis. You ever seen him shake hands with him? Couldn't. You know, and he was a good nigga. Can you imagine to give all your money to the government during World War II and put on an American uniform and then they come back and charge you? He had to work for the mafias, agree to the pay off the doggone. Uh... Boss man is not nice. Now I'm just telling y'all for the last time. <laughs> he, he, ain't no, he ain't nice, man. And he, hey, okay, any more questions or comments? Okay, we're getting close to uh, prayer time, right? Okay. Well, I think that might be it. We just wanted to, uh, we'll have a streamlined religious presentation tomorrow with this. Uh, since we got one or two minutes now. Encirclement, we've survived encirclement. After basic planning, uh, basic training, we never blinked. That means after going through the first stage of struggle during the 60s, uh, the first struggle was uh, not accidental, but it's just we acquired certain things. But it was in 1968 that I realized this thing about visualization. I remember it very clearly. In fact, I was opening the refrigerator and some clicked and said, I was thinking about the Ward brothers. I said, if I had four brothers doing the same thing I do, I could knock this whole show over. I was already rich, of course. Then it just slipped into my mind. All the brothers is your brothers. That's when we started an organization. Then visualization. East Oakland Enterprises, we could see limousines pulling off from, uh, you know, stuff we had bought. 
And less than a year later, all of that was already long in progress happening. So visualization, we visualize in 15 years or somewhere like that. That means we'll be about 90. Is America asking us, how did y'all do that? And we'll be telling them, well, we did this, we did that. Uh, we'll tell them the details because, see, we did detailed studies. When I'm talking, it sounds haphazard. It ain't that haphazard. It's detailed, meticulous, repetitive struggle. The ability to go over the same thing every day all day, all the time, over and over again. Because it's the right thing to do. So thank you all very much for uh, being here. And uh, inshallah, we'll get on the road. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. So there's a book the, of, uh, was it uh, Ivanka Trump 